you do not feel comfortable or have not signed the waiver and get started this is asia's meeting so she'll go ahead and start i'm going to share my screen and show the power Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right, Asia, go ahead. Hey, y'all. I'm Instructor Asia, for those of you who have not met me. So to kick off this meeting, I'm very heavily into manifestation, positive affirmations, and gratitude. And I feel like a big part of this journey is mindset. We've shared with you earlier in the week that it's 80% nutrition. It's 20% work, but one of the things that we all sometimes forget is that it's mindset. Whatever you feed to your mind, it will believe you. Whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're going to believe yourself. So today, I want you all to believe that you can, and I want you to repeat after me. Don't take yourself off of mute, but when I signal you, I want you to speak this positive affirmation or you can feel free to type it in the chat. So the first one is going to be what Jenny said last week, which is, I am worth the work. All right, good, good, good. Second, I am capable. I am capable. Yeah. Third, I will succeed. Perfect. I see everybody's lips moving. I love it. <laughs> So I want you to think about those things and remember those things. Continue to speak positive words to yourself because your brain will absorb all of that energy and work it towards your goal and you will succeed. You can come out of the successful. So moving on, that leads into the next quote, which is to get through the hardest journey, we need to take only one step at a time, but we must keep stepping on. So like I share with my instructors all the time, you don't want to look at it as a whole staircase because you'll probably get discouraged and you won't keep going. Look at it one step at a time. And that's from Chinese Proverbs. Moving on to our agenda. First, we got the 365 Journey to Health episode three. Second, we got the opportunity to share your story if you're comfortable doing that. Third, we got the question of the week. Fourth, we're going to dial into your nutrition brought to you by me. Fifth. We're gonna do the movement pattern review. Six, we're gonna do Coach Chris's new strength education video. Seventh, we got this week's goals and action steps. Eight, what to look forward to. Ninth, we got that tip of the week. 10, our gift to you, and we're gonna close it out with a question and answer. So I'm gonna pass the mic to my friend, Dez. Go ahead, play, yeah, play the video. <laughs> Thank you, Asia. Jenny, did you uh, share audio? How do I share audio? So go ahead and stop share. Okay. And then when you go to share screen again, there's the window that pops up, bottom left-hand corner, there's a share computer audio. Ooh, I don't see it. When you click share screen, so click share screen first. Okay. And then there'll be a pop-up. And then the bottom right-hand corner, or left-hand corner, share computer Bye. audio, and then now you'll be able to do it. Okay, thank you, Joshua. No problem. So confused. So I always call down nutrition and any advice that anybody can follow. Four words. Are you ready? Balance, variety, moderation, exercise. So balance means that with all of the different food groups, I'm going to throw some nutrition terms out at you. So you've got the fruits, the vegetables, the protein, the fat 
and the grains or the carbohydrate the other yeah the, i would have to say the grains so like bread and and cereal and those and rice and pasta and those sorts of things balance those groups Variety means that if you pick one of the groups, like a vegetable group, you don't only want to eat carrots, right? So any diet that says you've got to eat just carrots or fruit, you, got, you can only eat grapefruit. Any of those aren't going to make it. So variety within each food group is what people want to do. You can have a bite of a carrot you can, or a whole carrot, but not 30 of them. Because a carrot has different nutrition, different uh, vitamins and minerals in it that then say a piece of cauliflower or celery or bell pepper. They all have different stuff that your body needs. So I can say, oh, a carrot has vitamin A and a bell pepper has vitamin C and this. Our clients, our customers, you don't need to know that. Who cares, right? Just say, oh, I got to have some vegetables. So fruit, you don't want to just have a pear or just have an apple or just have a grape. But in the variety of them, all of them have different stuff. That's a non-scientific term. Different stuff in them that your body needs. Yeah. So variety within Moderation, I had mentioned the other day, people who are on diets always feel guilty if they have a bite of a cookie or a cookie or a half gallon of ice cream. So moderation means, hey, it's okay. Have a little bit, have a scoop of ice cream, right? And exercise, that's your area of expertise. So I stay away from that, but you need to balance. What is it that you're taking in that your body needs to balance out and you always go to the market right after you've eaten yeah, yeah. And, right you and you shop the periphery of a market yeah avoid all the chip sections and the, and yeah. the sugar and you know what is right now that you bring that up let me just tell you that sugar is addictive Sugar and salt are put in food to make you want more. Hey, Gabby. Hello, Desiree. Welcome to our episode three of this journey. How are you doing so far? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, absorbing a lot of information and just keeping going. So I know you've had a couple talks with um, your nutritionist, currently your dietitian. So yeah. this week's question is, um, what is your relationship with nutrition? The more that I focus on eating the things that are, you know, healthier overall, like that are more nutritious rather, making me crave the other stuff less. It, and I think that that's, you know, common. It's like, it's easy to just grab the caffeine, grab the sugar, you know, grab the thing that, you know, you, you think you need instantly. <laughs> but if you have the salad, you know, with the carrots and the beets and like all these different components, like your body actually feels fueled. You know, and then you don't crave it as much. What I've been really trying to focus on, because I, like I said, I was so focused on the numbers for so long. Like, oh, I have to have this many calories. And, you know, and I'm sure that that becomes critical depending on your goals. But uh, for me, it, it just seemed to, it seemed to hold me back in terms of nutrition. Like I wasn't really getting all of the food groups. The difference in my body, for sure. Like I, I feel a lot more, like a lot more energy when I focus on getting the things I need. Versus right, because those like, foods are the ones that energize you. Those are the ones yeah. that give you the power to continue with your workout or your day even. Artichoke and cherries. Hey, Three Wins fam. I just got done working out and came in to get some food. Uh, I like eating things like artichokes and you know fruit or vegetables, things like that. Things that will help give your body the nutrients it needs, especially if you're working out. So it's important to keep in mind balance, variety, moderation, and exercise. We got this. We got this. Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's so good to see you all again. And like before, just pat yourself on the back. Round of applause that you're here. You know, that consistency, that's what's important. Um, all of our bodies and, you know, we're all very different and at different levels. But the one thing that I think unites us is we're all 
getting to know um, ourselves, you know, and getting to know those levels. And we're all on that journey, um, which is pretty cool. It's cool to have this community and us all have that uh, to be together. Um, for me personally, consistency while well, nutrition was a bit rough at first, because when I thought about balance, variety, moderation, and exercise, and then I looked at the choosemyplate.gov, I found I was getting very little vegetables. And if you've made it to the Dr. Lisa Gore uh, chat, one of the things that she notes is how important the vegetables are. Um, but keeping that in mind, I, uh, I just kind of readjusted, like I started adding, you know, celery and artichokes and things like that more so I could get it in. And, and I think that's the important thing is just finding what works for you and what you like for your body, what fuels it and playing up on those things. Um, uh, oh, oh, sorry, I was, I was gonna talk about our life and its complexities are also different. So that's the other thing. Um, so yeah, the consistency becomes very important, pretty much. It's just good that we're staying consistent. Um, on your screen now, we have uh, some questions about if you have anything in your journey that you would like to share, like was there any highs and lows or things that you found with nutrition or the exercises? And is there anybody here that would like to share? Irma, go ahead and share. Okay, so uh, for me, um, staying consistent with the exercise is not so hard. Um, what happens to me at night <laughs> is what I can, it bothers me because, um, because I have pain most of the time, um, at night, I guess, because I'm not, I'm trying not to think about anything, then the pain just hits me. And the only way I can, or well, this is my way of thinking, right? I know I'm wrong, but, and I want to learn how to control this. Um, in order for me to go back to sleep, I have to eat something sweet. And that's the only thing that will calm me down to go back to sleep. So for me, that's the lowest to have to do that to go to sleep. And I feel bad. I feel bad because I'm so focused on the exercise and on the, on, on the uh, portion control, but you know, I'm eating this, uh, anything that I, I can find that is sweet. So, so do you wake up or are you, or are you awake already? I wake up. I wake up. The pain wakes me up. So that's after being asleep for a while. Uh-huh. Um, after maybe like an hour or two hours. Uh, sometimes it could be at two in the morning. Sometimes it could be at three or four in the morning. Uh, and you know, normally when I'm in a lot of pain, I, I, I have my husband uh, give me a massage, not because the massage is going to help me. I guess just the fact that he's putting his hands on me calls me down. Um, and so I don't want to bother him all the time because then he won't get that much sleep either. <laughs> so, you know, I try to maybe go to another room and that's when I just go to the kitchen and sneak out and get something to eat. Have you, have you tried any any breathing exercises? Yes, I've tried um, I've tried meditation. I tried um, I have gone uh, through different counselors where they teach me um, what they call the sleep hygiene um, and really it doesn't work as well as I wanted it to work. Um, but maybe there's something that I'm not doing right. So, so maybe maybe something that can be done is that um, at, a, at, a, at a different time, Jenny can reach out to you and number one, identify where the discomfort is coming from and that maybe in the time before you go to bed at night, there's some stretches and some mobility things that she can go through with the, with the breathing as well uh, that may make you more relaxed, but also may relieve some of that discomfort that is popping up. So why don't, why don't uh, Jenny and you get together after Jenny can get a hold of your information or you can type it in. And okay. uh, 
I, I think it's the identification of what it is that's waking you up and seeing if we can address that before you go to sleep and maybe that helps, maybe. Okay, thank you. So let's go ahead and move on there, Asia. Thank you for sharing, Irma. Is this me? I wanted to go ahead and, uh, yeah, let me add on to that. Thank you so much for sharing, Irma. Um, yeah, that could be really hard sometimes. And I found for me personally, if I focus on the balance variety and moderation and the exercise, it's helped me not want to grab like the instant sugar is what I call it. You know, but this is just for me personally. Um, and sometimes like, yeah, when I have those nutrients, it, it does help. Uh, but I think all of us are different too. We all have a different body. So it's, it's finding that balance. And um, that's actually gonna be one of our questions for tomorrow when we go and split off into our family meetings uh, is what is your relationship with nutrition and you know what you struggle with. And that could be a good opportunity for anybody that didn't get a chance to share to please share with us tomorrow and we can help you out. So this month is nutrition. We're focusing on nutrition. Like Dr. Lisa Gore was telling us, this is just a recap of some of the highlights that she was speaking about. And like Irma, you were saying that you get discouraged or you feel bad for eating a certain food. There is no such thing as a bad or good food. We just have to keep in mind that some foods are more dense or more nutrient dense than others. So you wanna have that balance, variety and moderation like she was saying. And also you wanna keep in mind that we're eating for life. So again, she doesn't like to use the word diet because it has the word die in there. So remember that eating is a part of living. You're, you have to eat to live. So a way to help you with this, for the healthy food, you wanna keep them visible, which is a really good tip for me because if the cookies are in front of me first, I'm gonna eat the cookies first and then I'm gonna go get the celery after. So you want to keep those fruits and vegetables at eye level so the not so healthy foods are out of sight. Also, to support you on your journey, you want to find somebody that you know or somebody that you love, somebody that you're close to, to get involved with you. Because when you have somebody on the same journey as you, you feel more confident, you feel more capable, and you automatically go into the mindset like, yes, I can do this because my friend's doing this with me, my aunt's doing this with me, my cousin's doing this with me. It just helps to have that support. So also you wanna practice meatless Mondays, make, make plants the star of your plate. Like she was saying, too much meat is not a very good thing. So you wanna focus on those fruit, those vegetables, all those greens, and you wanna balance from all the food groups. Eat the color of the rainbow, like the picture we have right here in the corner. You see there's purple, green, red, yellow, orange. Try to eat from all of those colors. Another helpful tip that I thought was really cool, she shared with us that the palm of your hand is your serving size. I shared with my team earlier last week that I had went with my family on a trip and they had chicken enchiladas and it was a big pan. And I had no idea how much to serve myself, so I just served myself as much as I wanted to. And I was like, dang, maybe that was too much. So now I know that it's the size of my hand is how much I should be serving myself. So if you want to, you want help keeping track of these things, that balance variety and moderation, you can use choosemyplate.gov. And also Jenny has shared the link for the last expert video with Dr. Lisa Gore, where she'll go over all this stuff again for you. All right, so we are going to start our shoulder and hip mobility exercises. So if you guys would like to find some space around you, especially a wall, or if you don't have a wall, maybe like um, a tall dresser, just like mine, just because my wall is so far away. Okay, so the first exercise we are going to do is the standing shoulder cars. So for this one, we are going to have to take a step to the side, all right? And then we're going to bring up our hand closest to the wall or to the dresser. So we're gonna bring that, our thumbs facing the sky. We're gonna lift that up towards the sky. Once we're here, make sure that your shoulder drops and is away from your ear. Okay, so from here, as you can see, we're going to flip our hand to make sure that our pinky is going to face towards the floor. 
So once we're here, we're going to rotate all the way down. And then we're gonna bring that right back up. Now, if you are too close to your dresser or the wall, and you accidentally hit the wall, don't force your shoulder, just make sure to step a longer side or a longer step to the side so you have and create that space that you need to follow through with the movements. Okay, so we're gonna do this one nice and slow. Make sure that you are breathing through and then we can go on with the next, with the other side. So I'm just gonna put my back towards you guys, but you can do the same. So for this one, we're going to lift up our arm, our thumb facing the sky, then we're gonna rotate our pinky facing the ground. Lift that up, make sure you're breathing through the motion. Inhale, exhale. And last one. All right, so for the second one, we have standing no money. So for this one, let's see if you guys can. Make sure that you're, when you're on the wall, make sure you have no arch on your back. So make sure that you are on the wall. Make sure that your elbows are, are by your sides, glued to your sides. For this one, we're going to have our palms facing the sky. We're going to take um, a deep breath in. While we're taking or exhaling, we're going to move our palms to our side. We're going to bring them back to the center, take in, exhale, and move to the side. Last one, to the center, and out. All right, and then for the last shoulder one, we're doing the Egyptian. So for this one, you're going to stand, make sure that your feet are shoulder width apart, and make sure that one thumb will be facing the sky and then the other one will be facing the floor. Now face the, the thumb that's towards the sky, and then when you rotate, make sure that you face your palm and the other one now faces the, the floor. And then we can rotate, make sure that your shoulders are dropped and are far away from your ears. We're gonna do two more. And two. All right, so we're going to move on to our hip mobility. So for this first one, we are going to do standing hip cars. So for this one, we are going to need a, car, um, a wall. And then we're going to grab onto the wall. Pretend that you're grabbing onto the wall. Make sure that your hands are in a line. We're going to have a slight bend in our knees, as you are going to see here. Okay, so a slight bend on one knee, the one that doesn't have a slight bend, we're going to bring it up towards your chest. And then imagine as you're, um, imagine you drawing a circle. So we're going to go around. Two, three. All right, and then we can switch legs, make sure the one knee has a slight bend. We're going to lift the other one towards our chest. Make sure that you have no arch um, on your back. And then we're going to imagine that we're drawing a circle with our leg. Also, while you're doing these at home, you can rotate and make that one rep. All right, and then we are going on to our hip flexor stretch. So for this one, we are going to need if you have a chair around you or maybe a stable surface, you, you might want that. So here, we're going to have a chair. Maybe you, it's not a little visible. Okay. So for this one, we're going to bring it up. And then we're going to slightly make sure that you tuck your tailbone in. Have no arch on your back. We're going to slightly lean in. You're going to want to feel it on your hip flexor right here in this area. Okay, so we're going to slightly, and then you can also bring up your arm and then go to the side and push to the side. Make sure you are breathing through. Relocate and then push to the side again. 
If bringing your arm up is too uncomfortable, you can always put it to or lay them on your hips. That way you can also feel that you're tucking in your tailbone and make, and make sure that you have no arch in your back. So we can do that one more time. And then go to the side. And if you wanna switch legs, slightly lean in, making sure that you hit, feel it on your hip, hip flexor and then reach to the side. All right, and then we can move on to the next one. So for this one, now we are going into level two and we are going to want to start on our knees. Yesenia, Yesenia, we can we can stop at level one, and then for those who want to do level two, they can do that after the meeting. Okay. Thank so, you, Yesenia. No problem. Thank you, Yesenia. How's everyone feeling so far? Okay. Hey, three wins for this map. Today we're going to be talking about two very important exercises, the squat and the deadlift. Both of these exercises are very important to learn and practice because they're both and come up slowly. Hey, three wins for this map. Today we're going to be talking about two very important exercises, the squat and the deadlift. Both of these exercises are very important to learn and practice because they're involved in the majority of our daily activities. Anytime we sit down, get back up, we're squatting. Anytime we pick something up off of the floor, we're deadlifting. To get into an ideal squat position, we want to open up our feet, slightly widen the hip width, and we want to flare our toes. Can everyone hear me right now? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you, but he's frozen. Okay. So I only wanted to show about 20 to 30 seconds of that because this is going to be a part of the homework for everyone to watch. We're going to go ahead and have Chris talk about the difference between a squat and a deadlift. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Jenny, can you stop uh, your screen sharing so I can... Yeah. Be very, uh... Yeah, mode. Cool. So for our squat, sorry I'm a little far away, I'll be loud. So for our squat, when we come down, all the movements coming out of the hip and the knee were coming down. So we're coming down, I'm bending at both the knee and the hip, we're coming down to that parallel position and shooting back up. Whereas when we're doing our deadlift, it's very important that we hinge first, get that torso nice and high, hips back, drop into a partial squat. We're gonna pick up our object, come out of that partial squat, come out of that hinge, come forward. Demoing it with the weight. I have my weight. I'm gonna hinge first by bending at the knees, pushing the hips back. I'm gonna drop into that partial squat using my one hand, chest up nice and high, come out of that partial squat, finish by unhinging at the hips. So the squat supports, we're gonna feel this right here in our quad, the front of our leg. The deadlift, similar to the hinge, we're gonna feel that in the back of our leg. You're gonna feel that tension start to build back here, whereas in the squat, you'll feel it up here. Does anybody have any questions on the uh, deadlift or the squat? So everybody make sure when you look at Chris's video that you pay attention to the points that he is talking about, the hips and the thighs and the knees. And at first when you look at it, it'll look like the same thing. 
to look at it several times, several times until you see that there are the small differences. There's a question of how do you protect um, your back? Okay, so protecting the back, you have to make sure that the back is nice and flat. We want that tabletop position. And we also wanna create tension by bringing out our shoulders, engaging those lats, because those lats are what's gonna help us pull with our chest and our arms instead of pulling from our back. So with that on the deadlift, it's important to make sure we twist out, make sure that chest is nice and open and that our chest is nice and proud. We, we want that natural arch in our back. We don't want to, we don't want to come out this way and then come back up. You find when you do the hinge and the deadlift that it becomes important to make sure that the uh, entire core is engaged? Yes, that is well. We want to make sure we brace our, ab, our abdomen by building that pressure up in there. Take a nice deep breath and really feel like if you're getting ready to get a punch. And that'll also help you protect your back as well. So I think that the critical point there to realize, and so you do it without weight first, all right? Until you become good at executing the, mom, the movement. But sometimes when we think about doing that hinge and that we are uh, going to feel it more in the hamstrings and the lower back, that that's what we focus on and we don't get that solid core that Chris is talking about. So you just, you just kind of go into the movement without getting set first. And that's when I think that the potential uh, injury can occur as you, you, you're just picking it up without thinking. It's just like the objects on the floor, you pick it up without interest, in, without engaging everything and thinking about what you're doing. So make it purposeful. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. To sum up everything that we did, we do have some process goals and action steps for the week. Step number one is to re-watch and practice all of the education videos that we have already put out. And the reason why we want you to re-watch and practice these videos is so that way you can build upon each skill. Remember, the body moves as a full unit and it's important to be able to do the push-up, the hinge, mobility, wrist, uh, the T-spine, shoulders, and hips. Step number two is to prioritize two to three days to do your program. And then for the whole week, get in your 150 minutes of aerobic activity. Step number three is to watch and practice the strength education squat and deadlift video, which we had just showed you in the previous slide. And Chris said, have, if you look at the slides again, you'll see the difference if you really were to see the hip angles, the, the hip hinge, you, you see that the hips are pushed a little bit more back versus when you're squatting, you're sitting and sitting up and down the couch or chair. Step number four is to dial into your nutrition. Step number five, which we are carrying this tip on from last week, is to stay hydrated. And for those of you who do not remember what, how much water you should be drinking, it's half of your body weight in ounces. That is the minimum. And if you are exercising and you're sweating, which you are losing water when you sweat, then you want to drink more. That way you do not get dehydrated. And step number six is to be grateful for where you are in your journey. Gratitude is the best attitude. And so what to look forward to. So um, the first one would be effective weight loss with Sahar. So that's going to be Wednesday, July 29th at 10 a.m. And then we have our strength education um, family meeting, which is Wednesday the 29th, but at 7 p.m. And then we also have intermittent fasting um, at medical issues with Dr. Um, Slatin, and that's going to be Thursday, July 30th at 5 p.m. And then, of course, our El Camino meeting, which will be Thursday, July 30th at 7 p.m. Tip of the week. So you guys should be asking yourself every day, 
What is one thing I can focus on to make me better than I was yesterday? <laughs> you always want to aim to be 1% better than you were. The goal is 100%, but every day sometimes we step back and we go lower and lower. So to make yourself 1% better, think of things like what is one veggie I can incorporate into my lunch today? When can I fit a 15 minute walk in? What's a resourceful meeting I can attend or watch? Like Jenny was saying about the water, I struggled with that a lot. I was like, how much water did I drink today? I like sugary stuff. I need to drink more water today. So think about those things every day. I'm gonna pass the mic back to you, Jen. Now we do have a gift for everyone. These videos are posted on YouTube. And if you were to get these slides, you can also click on the blue links and it will take you straight to the video. We do have a full body uh, mobility video, it's the flow. It ranges anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. And so if you were to take a look at the video, we give you a rep range around five to 10. And if you choose to pick the rep range towards 10, then you'll go closer to a 30 minute mobility. However, if you are starting and you're new and you're beginning uh, your mobility journey, then you do want to start and then gradually build on. And so I would recommend starting with five reps each. That way you can target around 15 to 20 minutes. And this would be great on your recovery days. Can you tell, tell us again where the uh, links are on that? These links are going to get us to YouTube. So I'm gonna click on this right now and then it'll automatically take us to Hello, 3 Wins Fitness. Welcome to our full body so mobility. That link is <laughs> This can range anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. We will give you a rep range of either five to 10. If you choose to go. So they, they need to go to the uh, PowerPoint presentation to get to the link? Or is the yes. link accessible in, in other fashion? We can also send it via email. And I was planning on putting it into the VIP webpage as well. And um, I'm going to talk to Josh and we're going to put it up on maybe on the calendar, to make it easy access. So I think um, on the calendar as well as Josh, when you send the, uh, the, uh, the recap of today's meeting tomorrow, uh, if you could send that link, will that work? Yep. And That'll then um, what can people do? to save that link so that they don't have to dig it out? Where can they save it on their computer? Or how can they save it on their computer for easy access? If you want, what you can do, um, Jenny, if you want to um, stop sharing your screen. So what you all can do is I will show you um, really quickly on Chrome. So um, if you want to, throw in what uh, browser you have that you use. Um, I can try and walk you through it as well. Um, but at least through Chrome, Chrome is pretty versatile and it's, you can use it on a Mac or a PC. Um, but what you can do is pretty much what Rachel had suggested is you can bookmark it. But on top of that, what you can also do is create a folder. So if we go to, let's see if I go open up that, um, Let's see, where's... So we're gonna go to the link of the gift. So if this is your YouTube page, at the top there's a star here to bookmark it. If you click on that, it'll say the name and then the folder. If you click down on that folder where it says choose another folder, you can click that and create a new folder. And so you can pretty much add a, a bookmark for every video that you have uh, relative to the Three Wins program. Um, click new folder and you can name this Three Wins Mobility or Three Wins um, Exercise Videos. And so every time you save a, uh, a, a new bookmark or a new web page, then you can just go straight to this uh, folder. So I'm going to put this up. Oh, well, I'll have to organize that later. Uh, press save. And so now, let's say you go to a new tab, right? And you're opening up a new browser. You're starting fresh tomorrow morning. You can go to your bookmarks or you can press these three dots 
where it says bookmarks, find that folder that you created, um, other bookmarks, or you can have it right there in the, in the start. Uh, where is it? Where do we put it? It was under miscellaneous, three wins exercise, and then there's your YouTube video again. So you can create as many folders as you want on Chrome. Um, you can do this on other web browsers as well. Um, you can do it on, for those of you, how do I do it? Uh, for those of you that use uh, Microsoft Edge or if you use Safari, um, each one of these web browsers does have uh, capacity to save bookmarks and uh, also create folders. So another thing you can do is you can Google it, or if you want, you can uh, send an uh, email info at 3 asking how to do it uh, for whatever platform you use. Um, and again, it's the same thing. Uh, the nice thing about Chrome, what I really like about it, if you haven't guessed it, I'm a big Google user. Um, nice thing about Chrome is if you download the, the app on your phone, um, it'll sync all of your bookmarks. So whatever folder you create on your computer, uh, if you're, let's say you're on the go and you want to do something on the go with your phone, um, that folder and that bookmark that you saved on your computer will be right there ready for you as well on the mobile device. Um, so again, if, if you want to use something different, if you're a Safari user or for whatever uh, browser you do use, you can send an email at info at threewinsfitness.com. I get all those emails, so it's more likely that I'm going to be responding to them. Um, you can feel free to send in, uh, all your questions there as well. I'll tell you the, the idiot way to do it, all right, which is, is my way, is once you get that video up, you cut and paste the link, and then you put it into a Word doc that you name videos. <laughs> and then you just keep putting it in there, and so that Word doc has Tomorrow all the links to all your videos. Tomorrow from Cal State, they're going to have a thing on nutrition. Oh. We can, maybe you'd like to watch yeah. it, too. All kinds of ways to do it. So if you can't figure it out, someone can help you. But what you want to do is make it easy for yourself so that uh, you can do it each night, right? You don't want to don't want to make it hard for you. Just pull it up, and then uh, I'll give you a tip on on uh, Jenny's video as well. Is that you set your your uh, your mouse up so that it's right on the pause button, and so then she goes through the movement. You watch it, you hit pause, you do your reps, then you hit play, watch the next one, hit pause, and um, that'll be easy as well. So help yourself. Do we have any questions from today's exercise meeting? Feel free to use the chat to ask uh, to type in your questions and or you can unmute yourself and ask the question as well. I have a question. Yes, Jan Wen. So how many videos currently are available that we should be bookmarking? Can you run through them so we get off to a complete start here? Yeah, how so many? far. So far we have mobility education video number one, which is going to be the breathing, wrist, thoracic, and ankles. And then we have mobility education number two, which is the shoulders and hips. And then we have strength education. We have the hip hinge and the push up. And then the new one that just came out today, which is the strength education squat and deadlift. And then we have an aerobic video, which Tony talks about RPE, measuring your intensity when you're doing your aerobic activity. So that's five so far. The two extra gift ones, which are the full body mobility, there's the reason why there's two is because there is a chair and wall one for those who are struggling getting on and off the floor, which anyone's more than welcome to do that one. I do recommend doing both if you can get on and off the floor. And then we have the floor uh, full body mobility as well. So there's a total of seven videos. That's not including the episode videos. And then if we were to go onto the calendar and if you wanted to, uh, for those who haven't seen the expert videos, 
the videos are also linked on the day when the experts have spoken. So if you were to go on the calendar and to look at last Thursday, you click there, the video, the recording should pop up. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Here, here's my suggestion to you, all right? So you all don't get lost in, in all the videos, particularly the ones you haven't done yet, because some of you are behind, is that I would take the gift that she gives you. So today's gift, so now you don't have to remember back to last week. Take the gift and use the gift, okay? That's your mobility. And then go into your phases, or your foundation, or your program, your prep, your program, and your foundation. Those are your actual work that you need to be doing. So don't get caught up in all the extra stuff, okay? That is extra. But I would do the one mobility one, and Jen has, Jenny has set that up so that it's gonna take you from 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how, rep, how many reps that you do. That's all it'll take. Work that into your routine, my guess is you'll do that at a separate time than you do your other phases information. But you got to get to the prep stuff or the foundation or the program. Those are the three. You cannot, you cannot keep putting this off. It's just not going to work. So you, you must do those. And then I would do the gift that she gave you. And if you just did that, for the rest of the year, you'd be much different. But for sure, contemplating about this for the next three weeks ain't gonna get it done. But you need to watch certain videos to learn the technique for you watch your- the If you watch the mobility one that she has given you, that will give you the technique. The others are, are just little extras. And, and I would encourage you to all watch all the extras too, right? I mean, you can't, you can't not benefit by not watching all the extras, but if you find yourself getting lost in the, in the, in the videos, just do the one. And that'll take you through top to bottom. That's, that's all I've been doing. Don't worry about the other ones. So you got to do it, folks. So um, Josh sent out an email. If you have a 15 minute question, uh, then I have that availability on Thursday and Friday. So check your email. You can, you can set up an appointment. Uh, but what becomes very important again is that, uh, and you've heard it um, many times, you don't wanna just keep hearing the same thing. You, you wanna do something and ask a different question. That's how you're gonna make progress. If you keep asking the same thing, then, then what that suggests is that you aren't doing what you're supposed to do because you keep asking the same thing. Should be a new question, right? Should be something that starts to feel a little different that, oh, this feels different because I tried something new today. So it's a challenge, but um, there are people certainly that wait, will wait all year to actually get going uh, because there's just a volume of information that we are, we are providing to you. The mobility exercises will help you do the, the prep, the program, and the foundation. It, it will help that. Is it critical? It's not critical. But if you go all the way back to what Jenny said earlier, it's that opportunity to move well, which the mobility helps you do. And then that helps you do the other things easier. Sound like a lecture. That's what it was. So we got to get going. Thank also, you, really Lord. quickly, quick to note, if you do um, book an appointment for Thursday or Friday, um, it'll show that it's with me, but that's only because it was my account. I helped Dr. Loy set up all the booking and everything, um, but the meeting will be with primarily Dr. Loy. Um, I have a couple meetings at the, those two days as well, but I'll be chiming in um, to answer any questions as well. I will not be able to answer any tech questions. So that, that's not the place, I'm not the person to go to ask how to work your computer. No.
Josh is, and you can send it to the info email. And uh, Sahar, there was a, a, a indication on there. Sahar is going to do nutrition tomorrow. Sahar is a uh, intern, a nutrition dietetic intern. She has her master's degree, uh, but she's going to be giving some practical application uh, tips. So different than Lisa Gore, uh, but there are three sessions of that over the next three weeks, and we will record those if you're unable to attend. Uh, they are in the morning. But for some of you that maybe have had a little difficulty in getting untracked on the nutrition, uh, she's going to give some tips in that regard. Couple minutes, any more questions? Susan from Foundation has a question for the appointment. She asks, is there a link for the call in the email that I received to acknowledge the appointment? So the initial email will have the Zoom information, the very first email that you received. Um, the confirmation email that comes from Doodle, there's no, uh, I don't believe that the link was attached uh, for the Zoom call, but go back to the original email. If you did not get that, um, if you're missing that original email or, or for whatever reason, um, you can shoot me uh, or shoot an email to info at 3 Wins Fitness, um, and then I can resend that for you. Janwin asked if we should mention Facebook Live videos. Janwin, our Facebook Live uh, for this week is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we're refilming again from phase one. The reason why we're doing that is so that way we can uh, start to put them, the follow along videos, since the lives are more of a follow along style, to put them on YouTube. That way you all can have access to it. And then depending on where you're at with the program, you can click on that and rewatch it to do with your program because some people are going to want that inspiration and motivation and which is why we decided to uh, start filming like, filming those and then uploading them onto YouTube that way you can have access to it. They're so, actually sorry um, really just to clarify they won't be on YouTube they're they're going to be Facebook videos but they're going to be posted on the website so okay. if you go now to the website on the calendar every every icon that says Facebook Live, if you click on that, the video is actually embedded onto our website. So even if you don't have a Facebook account, you can re-watch all of our Facebook Live videos. Um, so like if Monday, Wednesday, Friday at the times that we have our Facebook Live just don't work for you, uh, maybe it's Wednesday in the evening or Tuesday or whatever the case may be, um, then you can go back to each one of those videos. Just go to the calendar whenever there was a Facebook Live, click on that day, um, and the video will be posted. Um, we're, for Facebook Live is pretty easy to, to um, embed right away, um, but give it about an, maybe two hours after the, the scheduled Facebook Live, um, just so that I can go in and actually embed the video. Um, it's not like a YouTube where it takes a while to upload and everything. Facebook Live is a little easier, so it should be readily available within two hours of the end of the session. Josh, before we, before we end today, why don't you go share screen and show them how to click on one of those. Remember that with the variety of uh, Facebook Live videos that we are doing, uh, and you want to just get your exercise in today, just click on any one of them. They don't necessarily need to go in a specific order. Uh, you just want to get your exercise in and, and do it with someone, then here's your opportunity. So Josh is going to show you exactly what he just said, and it might not be Today's video might be last week's, but who knows? So talk talk them through it, Josh. Oh, sorry, I was I was muted. Um, <laughs> I'm on the Three Wins calendar right now, and so if you can see here, Facebook Live. So all of these are labeled. So anytime you see a blue icon. Um, that says Facebook Live, you can click on one of those and that'll take you to that day's uh, recording. So here's your, uh, the event Facebook Live. Um, it, this one, they are labeled. So some of the previous ones, they were in different languages. Uh, so this one was in English. You can go down um, and then you can, you'll see the video here. If you just click play. Good morning, it'll just start. happy 
Monday, everybody. And it's okay if it's in a different language. The exercise is, un is, is one language. Just follow along. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to access this from a different um, different browser or a different uh, setup with the browser. So I'm actually not logged in. Oh, this one's not. Uh, let me make sure that actually posts. Here we go. Ah, so maybe you do need to be logged into Facebook. Okay, I'll figure this out. Let me make sure that this does it. Um, but yeah, all the Facebook Live recordings will be accessed through the calendar. Then we have one more question. Jessica asks, how do you stay motivated? Jessica, since we are going a little bit over time, what you can do is set up an appointment with Dr. Loy um, and we can make sure that a few of us are in there too. Uh, when it comes to motivation, motivation can be tricky because it will get you started. However, in order to keep going with this journey, it really is about discipline. So you have to ask yourself why you started in the first place. Why is this goal important to you? How are you going to feel when you have achieved this goal? And then feel that feeling right now and be grateful for the journey. Because everyone's gonna have some sort of different motivation, whether it be uh, internal or external, everyone is different. And so I can't tell you exactly how you are going to be motivated. It, it really comes down to why is this important to you? I think you have to have purpose. Yeah. There's got to be a purpose that you have to decide of why you're doing what you're doing. It, it, and, and that goes for everything in, you, in your life, in your career. There's got to be a purpose. Otherwise, why would we do anything? So figure out what that purpose is for yourself. And remember okay. to speak those positive words to yourself, encourage yourself, speak kind to yourself. That helps tremendously. I can't emphasize it enough. It really works. Even if you gotta write it down on a post-it and put it on your mirror, I can do this, I will succeed, I am capable. Look at that, say that to yourself, speak it into existence. All right, hope to see some of you on Thursday and Friday. Uh, like I say, they're 15 minutes and uh, have your questions ready and we'll have some answers for you. Thanks everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Are you all good? I'm good. Am I recording or are you recording, Josh? <laughs>